This is Keith Wildchild Middleton, representing Hydra, representing MCMI Records. I feel like hip hop is my sibling because I grew up with him, with her. You know, it's just like I was there when she was born. You know what I mean? So I came up with her and I watched her grow. And, you know, and I think uh, I like where she was going or he was going, and I. And I was there. I was there the whole the whole step of the way. I'm dating myself. I saved my allowance. I went to the store, to the record shop, and I bought a single, Jimmy Spicer, Super Rhymes. I was so happy I rocked that. Saved all my pennies. <laughs> and I took it home and I learned every single verse. Every verse, man, front and back, man. I went back to school. And I was like, but I'm not super rhymes. I was like, man, you couldn't tell me I wasn't super rhymes. It was GMS, my best friend since fifth grade. He and I, uh, we started a project, and uh, for school we had, we was like, okay, let's just let's rap, you know, talk about the the environment. So we made a rap about the environment and. I don't know, man, maybe we were like 12 years old and we would like hustle and make money here and there and then we take our money and go to the studio and just figure out what the song's gonna sound like and then we would record our verse and we just kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it and then we met, we kept meeting like like-minded people and people were doing the same type of thing and we just met and we kept going, just doing it because we loved it, you know, and, and we kept doing it not knowing uh, where we where it was going to take us, if any place. My parents were always uh, supportive. And so uh, I think maybe my first, I had a little keyboard. I must have been like two years old, one of those like piano things. <laughs> and then I got a drum set. It was a Muppet drum set. And I, I rocked that, kicked holes to the thing. And then, uh, then I got a guitar and then I just, you know, progressively, you know, kept getting more and more uh, instruments and stuff like that. And then I went away to school and I came back and my dad had this whole setup, like this whole Korg MIDI M1 and he had an Alessi's drum machine and a sequencer. And I was like, oh my God, that was it. That was it, man, that was it. I don't even remember what year that was, but when my dad did that, man, I would bang on everything in the house, and my mom would be like, stop making that noise! And now that I do stomp, she's like, keep making that noise! <laughs> you know, but, uh, no, nah, my parents always provided, like, I mean, we didn't have a lot, but we had enough, you know, and I was able to make do with what we had, and just, like, a drum set, a guitar, a keyboard, you know, practice, keep practicing, always practice. They always encourage me to practice. And then on top of that, my parents always listen to all types of music. My uncles, they listen to all types of music. I have an uncle who's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. His name is Clarence Collins. His group is Little Anthony and, and the Imperials. And they did like Shimmy Shimmy, Coco Pop, and Tears on My Pillow and stuff like that. And then I have another uncle who married a woman who introduced him to her cousin. And he was like 14 years old because my, my uncle, Peppy Willie, is a musician and he writes songs and stuff. And she's like, you need to meet my, my little cousin. So he met the little cousin. The little cousin was Prince. And he took Prince and he was like, okay, let me take you. I think you dope. I think you dope. Uh, let's bring the other people. And I think Prince was jam at the time when he was like 15. He was like Morris Day and uh, Andre Simone and a bunch of other people and took Prince over to get his first record deal. You know, stuff like that. I mean, I've always been around supportive people and I've always been I always had access to things and so like my, my mom would play everything from Weather Report to Bach to Stevie Wonder to Gil Scott Heron to like you know I had a plethora of, of musical influences all my life it'll be like 19 years coming up this August that I've been with this show with Stomp uh, but I remember when I first auditioned uh, a lot of people who had or already auditioned told me not to worry about getting it because they didn't get it. And these guys were like these like dope dancers and stuff like that. I'm not a dancer, really. I, I'm, I play percussion, you know, but I'm not like dope, you know. Um, so these guys looked at me like, you're not going to get it because we didn't get it. So, you know, just uh, 
<clears throat> the people out there, take note that you can't let anybody discourage you, man. You can't let anybody deter you from your dream or your goal, man. I decided to go and I got it that day. I got picked to do the show that day. So, you know, I think uh, I was determined and I went in there just, just being myself. And that's what I love about Stomp because it just, that show is eight people take you on this journey. And we may look different, sound different, you know, but you need, you need these different pieces in order to make the machine work. And uh, I learned uh, how to, to work with people and you can't really judge a book by its cover. Like, now I look at a garbage can and I'm like, oh man, I wonder what that sounds like. <laughs> You look at a garbage can, you're like, hey, I want to take this and throw it in there. Or can I make it from here? You know, that type of thing. But that's my livelihood. So now every time I'm sitting down and I'm looking, I'm always making aware. I don't know, when I sat down at this table, the first thing I did was, oh, man, I wonder what kind of wood this is. And I, was, I started tapping it, you know, because that's what I do for a living, you know. And so I always take the time out to check out the nuances, you know what I'm saying? So you take it a step further. You can't judge a book by its cover. You can't judge a person, you know what I'm saying, just by the way they look. I, I love the show. I love, I love the show, man. It's not, I wouldn't change anything about it. I love it. We always implement new material and we all play different roles. <clears throat> so, like tonight, I'll play Doctor Who and then tomorrow I'll be Sarge, you know, and then next week I'll be Mozzie, you know, and everybody, you know, those are names that we give the, the four characters, people don't know what the names are, but just so we know what track we're doing for that night or that performance, you know, so we can all switch. So it's not age or gender or race specific. Everybody plays everybody. It's dope, man. There's no experience ever in life I've ever encountered like this. Being true to myself and being honest with myself. Being honest with myself. Stop lying to myself, telling me I can do everything. I can't do everything, man. You know, people are limited. You have to know your limitations. You know, it's like, if you need help, you gotta ask for it, you know? And uh, there's too many artists out there, I think, that are just doing things just to be doing it because that's what's selling. I didn't do this album. I really didn't do this album thinking that it's gonna go crazy platinum. You know what I'm saying? This was because I was in a car wreck and I always <clears throat> had wrote music and I wrote poetry, but I never showed it to anybody because it was so personal, it was too honest. And uh, man, I got into that, that wreck, man, and I woke up in the hospital and the first, first thing I said was, I gotta put this album out, I gotta do this, man. So that right there in itself, and then the songs that's on this album, it's like all honest, all honesty. And I got a joint called Superstar. It's like it took me about a year and a half just to do the verse, because I would get so emotional. I couldn't, I couldn't go from one to the next. I couldn't go from verse to verse, because it, I was just getting, it's just too hard, too crazy, man. This is my bucket list, you know what I'm saying? This is like something, like I said, it's a, it's a personal goal. It's a personal goal for me to do this and to share. You know, and if two people hear it, man, I've, I've, I've done my job. <laughs> you know what I'm happy. I just wanted to be regarded as, you know, uh, a testament to someone who's told you can't do something and not to do something and you're not good enough to do something, you and you go ahead and do it. You know what I mean? Because you have uh, knowledge of self and then uh, self-determination. You know what I'm saying?